Welcome to the Swing Lab Performance Golf YouTube channel. I'm Thomas Campbell, the Director of Instruction, and we are a brand new teaching facility in downtown Lakeville, Minnesota. I'm excited to bring you lots of golf content here, swing instruction, teaching instruction, and a whole lot more related, related to fitting and golf content. Um, it's gonna be a great year for us here, and I'm very excited to bring you this content, so make sure you subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comments what you think of our videos. Today we're gonna to be talking about the loft on your driver. Uh, let's face it, everyone wants to hit the ball really far with their driver, but if you have too much loft on your driver, the ball may spin too much and the ball may just not go as far as you like. At the other end of the spectrum, if you don't have enough loft on your driver, you may have a hard time getting the ball in the air and you may have to change your swing around. So when you come see us at Swing Lab, we'll work on making swing changes and club fitting and all that. However, we do know that it takes a, quite a bit of changes to really make a big change to your game. So I wanted to just instruct you on what loft changes can influence performance. So today we're going to change up four different loft positions, specifically with the Callaway Paradigm Triple Diamond Driver. With that driver, my stated loft is nine degrees. With this driver, we can put it at minus one. If you happen to have the torque cog, you can put it at minus two. Um, however, so this particular cog is minus one. You can go neutral, which is just the stated, stated loft of nine degrees. You can go 10 degrees, which is plus one, or 11 degrees, which is plus two. I'm excited to hit some shots here, compare the data and see just how the performance works and even just find out what loft is best for me. All right, to begin, I'm gonna start with nine degrees of loft on the driver. So we're gonna start with the stated loft. If you look at the Callaway driver, it'll say S on it. That means it's the stated loft. So I'm gonna hit five or six drivers with this particular setting. I'm gonna to change to plus one, plus two, and minus one. Okay, so you can take a look here at these numbers, which is my nine degree driver. These are pretty standard drives for me. Um, ball speed about 166, club speed 112. Um, launch angle around 12, 12 degrees, spin 1923. Hitting at about 312 yards with a carry of 282. Um, what I thought I find interesting with a nine degree driver is spin loft is gonna be fairly low, especially for those golfers that have a very, very high attack angle. When I say high attack angle, you mind 5.3 degrees up. So this is why it's really important when you're doing a club fitting, when you're working with an instructor, um, working on your game, is to pay attention to attack angle and spin loft. Because that's really going to influence what type of driver you, loft you should have on your driver. Um, you can see here, it's 312. So I don't know if I can hit it 312 with 11 degree driver. I'm going to switch it to that and see what happens. And as I'm changing this, I always like to have my driver in a slightly upright position. So it's always going to be in the D for drawer slash upright. Um, some type of golfer likes to draw the ball. I'm going to anticipate now with 11 degrees aloft, it's going to be probably pretty easy to draw the ball. All right, so we made a two degree change in the driver loft. What I find interesting is there really wasn't that much of a change. 
there was significant changes to say, yes, loft is going to influence these numbers. For example, if you take a look at the launch angle, you can see I went from 12.1 to 13.9. So that's about 1.8 degrees, almost two degrees, right? Um, you take a look at the spin, we got about 200 RPMs more spin. I'm a little surprised that wasn't more. And a lot of that for sure can come down to where you hit on the club face, impact location, but also ball flight. If you take a look at the dispersion pattern on the screen here, you can see with 11 degrees of loft or my plus two setting, I didn't maybe leave the club faces open as much. So the ball was curving to the left a little bit more. Generally, the ball is going to spin a little bit less when it happens. Uh, coming along, look at the numbers here. It's quite interesting. The ball actually carried further with 11 degrees aloft, five yards further, in fact. And you can see the total distance was about one yard shorter. So why is this the case? Well, if you take a look at dynamic loft and spin loft, those numbers increased. That's what's going to happen when you adjust the driver loft or if you make any swing changes. When we just adjusted the stat static loft on this driver, we got about two degrees more loft at set up and then at impact as long as the swing didn't change the ball is going to launch a little higher spin a little bit more and carry a little further Okay, stay away from really spin rates sub 2000, especially anything under 1800. Now, if you're a distance golfer and that's all you care about, maybe, but this is a good example of what happens when you don't have enough loft on your driver, even when your attack angle is still five degrees up. Take a look at the spin rate. Spin rate dropped to 1570, and I actually lost carry distance. So 281.9, it's the lowest carry distance so far out of all the drivers just purely because I don't have enough loft on the driver. Now, if I was swinging faster or my attack angle was really, really far up, yes, I could get away with a little less loft. However, if you take a look at the landing angle, you can see landing angle 32.8 and height, 89 feet in the air. So we lost some height. So a lot of this is gonna depend on the golf course you are playing. If you're playing on a golf course with really firm fairways, once again, you could get away with it. Playing soft fairways, there's no way that ball is gonna roll out what is that, 30, 35 yards? It's just not gonna happen. Um, yeah, so interesting numbers here. You can see that smash factor, the same 148 with all of them. Um, but the biggest difference here you can see is launch angle, you know, 12 degrees, spin rate 1570, which is about 400 RPMs less than the nine degree setting there. Lost a little bit of carry distance. Um, you can see that, yeah, just across the board, just not as high as we would like. Um, let's finish off with 10 degrees loft and then take a look. Just finished up with 10 degrees aloft on my driver. First stuff I've got to talk about is the dispersion pattern. Take a look at those five dots that are really close together, directly up the screen and nice and far hovering around about 290 yard carry. 
very happy with that. So what's really interesting here is numbers are fairly close. So if you take a look here, total distance, we're talking a range from 311.6 to 316.2. So you're talking five yards, but for everyone, you know, five yards is going to make a big, big difference depending on what club speed that you've got and how you deliver the club. But you take a look at the carry distance, there's a little bit more separation. And the one thing to really keep in mind here is the golf course that you are playing. Make sure that you're adjusting for the golf course you're playing, whether it's a firm fairway golf course or you're playing in some soft conditions. Carry distance is obviously going to be important with softer conditions, while a firmer golf course you may get some more roll. Ball speed didn't really change much here. You can see I've got a range here, you know, maybe one, one and a half mile an hour ball speed. So a lot of that is just my consistency of where I'm catching on the club face. But yeah, if you take a look at the dispersion pattern, I find it really, really interesting how the lower loft, you can notice how more to the right. So the standard setting or the minus one, the ball was staying a little bit further to the right. If you take a look at the higher loft, the ball was actually able to turn over just a little bit more for, for me there too. So interesting numbers. The biggest change up is going to be spin. So if you take a look here from minus one, we got 1570 on the spin. And then plus two was 2115. So 600 RPMs of spin is going to make a big, big difference. Once again, it's also going to depend on your club speed. If you have a faster club speed, there's going to be even more of a separation. If you have a slower club speed, there's going to be even less of a separation. Also, make sure when you are talking about these numbers here is if, if you have a slower club speed, you're going to want more loft to get the ball up in the air to carry a little bit further. So faster golfers generally will play less loft on the driver. Slower swing speed golfers will generally play higher loft on the driver. But yeah, take a look at the curve numbers. You can see minus one, 11 feet of curve to the right. Uh, if you take a look here at plus two, 21 feet of curve to the left. And on average, plus two, plus one, and standard, one feet of curve to the left, and when I have less loft on the driver, the ball wanted to curve a little more to the right. So really interesting takeaways here. Um, I found 10 degrees for my driver is going to be great, so I think I might be playing around with this for a little bit longer. Not only did it go further, and it went straighter. So if you want to hit it further and straighter, first off, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to have other great content like this. Also, if you live in the Minnesota area, make sure to come in and stop in and see us. Swing Lab Performance Golf in downtown Lakeville. You won't be disappointed.